Hi, my name is Dijle and I'm a PhD candidate in architecture. I moved to Ann Arbor back in 2016 and one of my favorite things to do is to go camping at Lake Michigan. I had zero experience camping before coming here, but luckily there are so many beautiful parks with amenities and resources that the learning curve is not as steep as you might think. In this video, I will give you a brief introduction to camping, how to book a camping spot, what to expect, what to carry in your camping kit, and how to purchase or borrow these items. And last but not least, a few things to keep in mind. I will take you along with me on a camping trip to Warren Dune State Park, which is only two and a half hours away from Ann Arbor. So let's start with the first question. How do you book a campsite? First, we need to start from the Department of Natural Resources page on michigan.gov. To book a spot at a state park, choose Make a Reservation option, which will take you to a separate web page. Here you can choose your camping style, your booking dates and your preferred equipment, such as tent, truck, trailer, RV, etc., which will filter through available options for you. On the next page, you will see a map of Michigan divided in three regions, Lower Peninsula, Northern Peninsula and the UP. Clicking on these will make you realize that there are so many parks all across Michigan. So do some research before you book a spot. See if you're interested in a particular location or a particular park. Once you know where you're going, in this case, the Warren Dunes, click on that option. It will give you a map of the campground in that particular park. In Warren Dunes, we have modern campgrounds at Mount Rendell campsites and the rustic option, which is the Camp Hildebrand. The modern campgrounds are usually overflown with RVs and trailers, which can be a disadvantage if you want a more isolated experience. But you get access to electricity in your campsite, so if you need to plug in your devices, this might be more preferable for you. The rustic campsite is open to tent camping exclusively, which gives you a more soothing and relaxing experience in nature. Their nightly fee is also cheaper, you need to use an outhouse. Again, this might make the modern campsite more preferable as you get access to plumbing for a toilet and shower. Once you decide what kind of experience you would like and how much do you want to compromise, you can make a selection. Pay attention to where your campsite is. Is it close to the bathroom complex or the water access, which means heavy traffic at all times? The next thing you can do is to click on separate sites to get more information about each of them. This gives you a photo of the campsite, the allowed equipment and amenities provided. A picnic table and a fire pit are usually provided at each site. It might also give you some information about shading and privacy. And most importantly, it will tell you the nightly fee for that specific site. Once you make your decision, go ahead and reserve the site. So now that you have booked a site, what are you supposed to bring? Everybody's camping kit is different and it is always fun to walk around the campground to see who considers what item to be essential. In my camping kit, I have a three-person tent for some extra room, camp beds, which are inflatable beds that provide padding and insulation, and sleeping bags. I also bring a tarp to lay under the tent and some extra stakes in case there is too much wind or if I lose some of the stakes during packing and unpacking. Like having a lamp specifically for the tent and a couple of headlights, which I would argue are essential. You can also pack some outdoor string lights, especially if you're staying at a modern campground. I always bring a tablecloth for the picnic table, a cooler with some food and a bag with coffee and some non-perishables. I also use a backpacking stove and carry either a French press or a stove top coffee maker. Camp chairs are a must, I would argue, and you can also pack a hammock, but keep in mind that tying it to the trees on your campsite might not be possible. Also bring a rope for your wet towels and clothes. 
and some extra carabiners, which would also be useful. Last but not least, marshmallows and skewer sticks. Maybe some graham crackers and Nutella as well, if you want to make s'mores for the ultimate camp experience. Don't forget to pack your hat, your sunscreen, your bug repellent, and your itch cooling spray, just in case. For the campfire, you can pack some kindling, but no firewood. Lots of state parks prohibit carrying wood from outside the compound to prevent the spread of diseases. You can always purchase your firewood at the campground. So where do you get all these items without breaking the bank? Good news is that you can borrow most of the expensive and bulky items from the University of Michigan's Adventure Leadership Program. These include backpacks, tents, sleeping pads and bags, camping goods such as headlamps and coolers, and even backpacking stoves like the one that I use. If you prefer to purchase some of these items, especially the ones that can be useful in your daily life, you can visit the REI store. You can also become an REI co-op member to get access to special discounts and earn rewards. We have talked about how to choose a campsite and what to pack. There are a couple more things you need to know before showing up to the campsite. Poison ivy and poison oak are in abundance in state parks. These are edge plants. They always grow along the border of wooded areas, and so they might be found around the edge of your campsite. Once you arrive, take a close look at the plants and shrubs surrounding your site. Stay away from areas which contain poison ivy and poison oak. Both of these plants have three leaves, and the stem carries a reddish auburn hue. Hunting season is another thing to keep in mind. Check out the beginning and the end of the hunting season for 2024 and 2025 and wear a bright orange hat if you're planning to hike on the trail during hunting season. When you go to bed at night, lock all the food in your car, including the trash and the cooler. This is the only safe option to prevent a raccoon attack in the middle of the night. And if you are camping in the northern or upper peninsula, know that you are venturing into the bear country and figure out what you're supposed to do to be safe. And I wish you good luck. Last but not least, enjoy Michigan's wonderful nature, gorgeous sand dunes, beautiful beaches and trails.